Okay, today is gonna be a post-mortem of sorts, and the reason why is a little bit complicated. To fully explain, we have to go back in time to August of 2019. August of 2019 was an interesting month, to say the very least, because that was the time when I was introduced to an esports organization named Regal Reserve. Regal Reserve was just a disaster. Led by a boy named Andrew, I say boy less because of age and more because of business acumen and mental maturity. Led by a boy named Andrew, supported by his father, Regal Reserve was attempting to break into a then booming sub-industry of gaming where teams, organizations, and creators were marketing slash promoting mansions for their teams to live in as an incentive. Regal Reserve aggressively pursued this idea, but there was a little tiny problem. They were advertising a mansion where residents would be a prize in their big recruitment drive or competition, whatever it was, that they did not own and had no legal rights to. Upon learning this through a bit of investigation, I decided to make a video and what followed was a rabbit hole deeper than anything I could have ever expected. Regal Reserve had numerous different scandals and failures, but in summary, there was what appeared to be emotional manipulation and abuse. I think psychological manipulation is what the CEO and owner openly called it and how he treated his players. Fraudulent giveaways, the mansion that they obviously didn't own, being used as a prize to expand their social media presence. Their official Twitter account, like, by the way, was actually a compromised profile from a Filipino celebrity that the group had bought from a hacker and it didn't stop there. Regal CEO Mr. Andrew Arbini apparently pushed a group of teenagers towards a $150,000 bank loan in an attempt to offload worthless company assets to them after his organization went down in flames. And in the end, his father, who was apparently an investor in the whole company, messaged a bunch of YouTubers that I'm friends with, who also covered the story, at one o'clock in the morning, saying that their videos on the matter were depriving African orphans of rice and beans also saying, with terrible grammar, I might add, that he is afraid of the upper echelon collective, he is impressed with their power to destroy and control, and quite honestly, I just think he was completely slammed and drunk. Suffice it to say, as a series with all of the twists and turns, this was one of the more iconic experiences of the channel, and if anyone cares to watch that entire saga unfold in video form, the playlist is linked down below in the description. Now, all of this is to illustrate one key point. Regal Reserve was a topic partially, even largely responsible for a shift in channel content, ultimately leading to where we are right now. I discovered that this type of analysis, investigating a topic, digging around, conducting interviews, and chasing down information, was rather appealing. I cut my teeth, in a way, on this story, and quite honestly, I'm... Generally speaking, I'm proud of the coverage. With that in mind, the fact that I spearheaded the topic of Regal Reserve and that it was an extended series on the channel with over half a million combined views, we arrive at the motivation for today's video. About six days ago, give or take, I was forwarded a link to an article about Regal Reserve, generally speaking, from the time frame when it was covered. Covered by me, that is. This link was to a website owned by the brand Esports Talk. Esports Talk is, basically, an esports news outlet with general gaming and Twitch information, which is best described as an industry tabloid of sorts. It's about drama, rumors, leaks, and similar subject matter. Esports Talk, which had covered the Regal Reserve story in video form during early 2020, narrated by a host named Jake Lucky at the time, had also, apparently, written an article about the subject, and this is that article by Isaac Chandler. To summarize, it's a breakdown, a general breakdown, of the Regal Reserve topic using point for point all of the information that I had sourced, dug up, documented, and organized with no citation. To be fair, they do actually link their own previous video, which does contain citation, but they also link two of the other YouTubers who I helped organize into joint coverage. They say, quote, According to a collaborative report from Sid Alpha, Pescator, and several other YouTubers, problems began months ago, end quote. But even the video that they chose to link from Sid Alpha, great channel by the way, definitely go check him out and subscribe, directly states in the first 30 seconds that all of this is a function of the work by Upper Echelon. Now, admittedly, this is a completely ridiculous thing for me to even be upset over in the slightest. It doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. And I'm only learning about this over two years later, so what's the point? But still, despite knowing it was a, and was and is a totally unnecessary and thoroughly petty thing to be upset over, I was a bit upset. I honestly was. This is an iconic series on the channel. It was one of the things that helped shape the direction of content in the future, and it seemed, at least to me, like this was a fairly deliberate choice to avoid backlinking. I would be fairly confident in saying that this author knew where the information came from. They knew that the entire story was a multi-month saga of work on my part. It was not a small thing, and they deliberately chose not to say so. 
I wouldn't necessarily be able to prove that per se, but it's very hard for me to believe otherwise. So there I am, annoyed, but what should I do about it? Well, passively surfing the web and thinking about the topic, I started to look at who or what esports talk really is. I had no idea at the time what their business was truly about, what their reach could be, their credentials, I knew nothing. I decided to start poking around and one of the first things that came up was a video by award-winning journalist Richard Lewis about how esports talk, more specifically a host named Hunter Grooms, had published a hit piece on him using unnecessary and totally unrelated clips after a breakdown he had being involved in the tragic discovery of his friend and roommate who had passed away. I won't go into very much detail on this, it's just a dark time for him and it's not worth amplifying that all over again, but the gist of it is that after being awake for a great deal of time, also I think being on medication, trying to get back to normal, and being racked with grief over those recent events, Richard Lewis got into a verbal altercation on a very famous Twitch broadcast. Now, me, someone who is not exactly plugged in with what happens over on Twitch, generally speaking, even I knew about this, and even I knew, with no research whatsoever, that it was the direct result of some kind of tragedy and grief, though I never attempted to find out specifically what or why. It wasn't entertaining, it wasn't gossip-worthy, it was just unfortunate. However, Esports Talk, narrated by their host, Hunter, used this situation as a way to undermine the character of Richard Lewis, after a few people in the Rocket League community got mad that he would be, I guess, casting an event. Yes, that is exactly how it sounds. Esports Talk, after Richard Lewis was appointed as a host for a Rocket League event, dug up a clip from the stream where he lashed out in grief while being near suicidal as well, and used it to accent a pretty obvious character attack under the guise of reporting on community frustration. In the interest of being thorough here, the host responsible, named Hunter from Esports Talk, actually responded in a four-page document when Richard Lewis brought attention to the subject, stating, quote, Lewis was informed before making these videos that the team was unaware of the situation surrounding the death of his friend and received an apology for that oversight, end quote. But when you examine their own library of videos, Esports Talk, narrated this time by host Jake Lucky on that particular occasion, actually reported on the death of Maria, while specifically acknowledging a connection to Richard Lewis as a close friend. Bottom line, it's very hard for me to believe that no one there had any idea what was going on when their entire supposed job is to report on news in the esports and gaming industry. However, as I speculated to myself that where there's one issue, there is probably many more, I found something far more impactful. Esports Talk is or was a massively popular channel receiving as high as 4 million views per week at its height. In a more typical period, the channel was acquiring between 1 and 2 million views per week, upwards of 5 to 7 million per month. For context, that's much, much larger than my own channel, and anywhere between 10 and 20,000 subscribers in a four-week time frame. The channel was thriving until December 17th, 2021. On December 17th, Jake Lucky and Hunter Grooms left the organization simultaneously. I actually reached out to Esports Talk in an effort to get information as to why this departure took place in advance of this video, but I received no response. These two hosts were very obviously some of their more popular personalities, because as soon as that exodus took place, the channel began hemorrhaging subscribers. What had previously been a growth pattern of a million views per week and thousands of subscribers per month became a downward spiral of negative metrics. Thousands and thousands of subscribers gone for weeks on end. And now most recently, less than 100,000 views per week, which is one-tenth of their previous standard. At the exact same time, possibly by way of necessity, their thumbnail design changed. But this new template was... Well, just see for yourself. The channel went from thumbnails like this to thumbnails like this. It seems entirely self-evident what kind of impact that will have when click-through metrics are heavily reliant on eye-catching, oftentimes color-saturated images with high contrast that draw attention to your video. Esports talk, from an analytical perspective, died unceremoniously as a result of these changes. When considering the fate of this channel so far, I catch myself thinking back to a group called Pretty Good Gaming. Pretty Good Gaming, or PGG to some, was an industry news channel which grew explosively, I might add, in the years before 2019. I don't have precise stats on this channel since Social Blade doesn't log that far back very well, so this is mostly based on memory, take that for what you will, but the Pretty Good Gaming brand was exploding onto the scene. Like, most people in our space had heard of them, at least a few times and watched a lot of their content, with average video viewership at or near or even above 100,000. As they advanced through their various milestones, however, something changed. They blamed it on the YouTube algorithm, an accusation that may in fact be true, I have no idea, but something else was happening in the meantime which may have played a significant part. Originally, Pretty Good Gaming featured a catchy thumbnail design 
that might have legitimately pioneered the gaming news space. They used white backgrounds and bold letters with accents on red, right? That was one of the more popular ones. And then they also had it, they, they had this way of making it like the characters were breaking out of the frame through clever usage of an exact color palette. Well, after quite some time and after a great deal of success, as in a lot of the popular creators that you know nowadays most likely copied their thumbnail design, they started to change this thumbnail. The results might have begun what later became a pretty severe downward slide, and when that downward slide became too much, hosts and employees began to leave or were let go. It's a sad thing to see, because they honestly did great work for the most part, but when the chemistry and charisma shifted, when the personalities changed, their channel ultimately died. It is now called Previously Good Gaming in the header, and the founder has openly acknowledged that the channel is dead. I am reminded of Pretty Good Gaming almost point for point by what I see now from Esports Talk. Once a channel that commanded over 10 million views per month, they have begun the slope of negative growth. Their thumbnails changed for the worse, decidedly for the worse, as they lost two major hosting personalities that they were well known for, and they now garner one-tenth of their previous metrics per month at best, more likely as low as one-twentieth. For the people still working there, it's undoubtedly a very difficult time. Having actually looked into everything now, I no longer bear them any ill will, but when so much of the YouTube world relies on charisma and viewer connection, it is fairly obvious to see and know what will happen when the face and voice of your channel disappears overnight. As in, Jake Lucky was primarily the host that I think a lot of people were there for having done more research. It doesn't mean that the new host is worse or even bad at all, that isn't what it means, it just means that the entire audience is now faced with something unknown and different overnight. Simultaneously changing your thumbnails to something objectively less eye-catching, that's a death sentence for algorithmic growth. And when you combine all of these factors, regardless of the actual reason that these two hosts departed on the exact same day, it spells disaster for the growth of a brand. All in all, esports talk appears to be going the same direction that Pretty Good Gaming went, after radical changes to their underlying framework. I first started looking at it because I was annoyed that they did not credit me in a two-year-old article, but I end the video wishing the current staff good luck in their daunting task of completely changing the direction of a channel when momentum is one of the hardest things to alter on all of YouTube without question. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below. I'm working towards Patreon and Locals being the primary funding mechanism for this channel, as well as Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative where all my content can be found, plus another YouTuber to check out, merchandise, social media, etc, etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.